Hello, my name is George Myhall, and this is my Office of Image Archaeology. I call it that because um, basically I'm doing archaeology on things that I find, old photographs, films, letters, documents, and this sort of thing. And today we're going to uh, be looking at uh, this uh, uh, panoramic photograph here. This is um, a uh, something that was found uh, at an estate sale. And uh, it, at one time, it used to look like that. You know, all these photographs, all these panoramic photographs, they were rolled up for storage because there wasn't a lot of space, you know, to, uh, you know, if they left them laid out like that, they'd wind up in this condition. And this one right here had been rolled up at one time, you can tell, but uh, uh, when it was unrolled, they did it without steaming it, and it broke and cracked, and fortunately it kept all the pieces together so I could tape it back together again and digitally uh, repair it. Um, actually, I had to scan it uh, in pieces and then, or in sections, and then uh, put it back together. Uh, this photo is titled Main Dam, uh, Main Dam New York City Water Supply, Brown Station, New York. Um, and it was photographed by a W.W. Thompson of Poughkeepsie, New York, and is dated November 20, 1910. This is a view of the downstream face of the Olive Bridge Dam, uh, the Olive Bridge Dam, rather. Uh, there is a stone crusher and concrete mixer plant, mixing plant uh, for the project, and you can see it on the right-hand side of the panorama. Brown Station was a small town that was flooded by the construction of the Ashokan Reservoir between 1906 and 1910 in an effort to provide a supply of fresh water to the ever-growing population of New York City. But you can see how these panoramas are uh, they're wound up and tight as a tight as a spring uh, when you uh, do this. Um, so, and this is why they break. This one right here had been unrolled and it was rolled back up backward. You'll see uh, later that the, uh, there's some damage at the other end, which means that was the original leading edge, and uh, so it had been uh, cracked slightly. But um, you know, we do our best and uh, unroll them, steam them, and and uh, repair them. What I've found easiest to use is, uh, this is a, a Conair clothing steamer. And it does a really good job here with this. And uh, again, for clothing, this is a, an old pants hanger. What I do is, is I just take it and put this on there. And it, uh, it holds it for me. Uh, so, we'll go ahead and we're going to plug this in, and I'll give you, a, or, or turn it on rather, I should turn it on probably already, but it'll take a couple minutes to get that steamed up. This really cool old antique ironing board comes in really handy. My office is fairly narrow, so I adapted it as a portable workbench. When I found it at a flea market, it was in pretty rough shape, so I decided to spruce it up. Using lacquer, I decorated it with this old... Uh, 1891 public sale from Ida Grove, Iowa, and some old photos, and the silk Spanish-American war flag. The flag and the public sale notice were both very, very fragile and uh, falling apart at the slightest touch. This preserves them in a way that they can be enjoyed by me every day. Anyway, this old ironing board works out really well for me as a workbench, especially for projects like this one. Once you're finished with the steaming process, there's the potential for some moisture to have leached through to the emulsion side. You don't want to lie the thing on, um, on any kind of uh, material like a towel or anything like that because there's fuzz or hair attached to that that may attach itself to the emulsion side because um, if it's moist at all, it's going to be slightly sticky. Put it on some cardboard like this, it helps leach the uh, moisture out of it. And also, because it's not lying exactly flat, Air has a chance to move uh, around the image, uh, helping also to dry it out. So that works out really well for me, and that's why I use it. So you can see this is starting to steam, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just I just want to relax the um, I just want to relax it. So all I do is I go ahead and I start. Don't really pull down at all. All you want to do is just So that was a telephone interruption um, and uh, so we're steaming this along and um, 
We're not trying to soak it or anything like that. All we're trying to do is get the paper, the emulsion and paper to relax. And once I'm done here, we'll take a, a, some weights. And what I use are um, the, you can see right here there's a crack in it. Somebody else tried to array, tried, tried, or they did open it up, but they, so it does have some damage. Um, I'm going to take some tire weights. These are stick on uh, balancing weights, or stick on weights that you would balance tires with. And I've, uh, discovered years ago that they do very well. So we'll take that off there. Take this off of here. And I'll lay it across here like this. And these are the uh, weights that I use. See that? And I put the vinyl side down. Hey, for that person that's about to make a comment about all the bad things about lead, we all know that. Just don't eat it, and uh, don't grind it up and breathe the dust, and you'll be fine. Remember, uh, we've been using fishing sinkers for centuries, uh, using uh, lead. As long as you don't handle lead every day, you're good. And the other thing you want to do is you want to build a frame for it, and I've, and I've built... Um, probably 35 or 40 different frames for panoramics. Uh, I have one panorama that was eight feet long. Um, so I've done a lot of uh, uh, restoration of these things and I've had a lot of good luck with them. Once you get it behind glass and you have a, um, a, a stiff backing and back of it, um, uh, it it's, it's going to stay flat. It's not going to be bowed and, and all that kind of stuff. Unless it was like in this case right here, I can see where it's been cracked. Right there, it's cracked. Uh, so uh, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm, I'll go on to uh, show you what it uh, took to digitally repair uh, the actual panorama that this whole thing is about. And uh, so we're going to do that. Um, so look for that next. Okay, so that's the um, product. That's the end product. It's a uh, uh, unrolled, stretched out uh, panoramic photograph and uh, this is uh, the brotherhood, brotherhood of American Yeoman and uh, that's uh, Captain W.T. Henning and his girls in white uh, at uh, Demer Homestead 5324 Brotherhood American Yeoman and that's uh, Mile High Photo Company uh, at the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. Okay after about three interruptions maybe I'll get this done this time. <laughs> the uh, phone keeps ringing, ringing off the hook here. Um, listen, when I first introduced this video, I introduced it as this photograph being produced November 20th, 1910. It's actually, obviously, November 26th, 1910. Uh, listen, folks, I'm using Adobe Photoshop here. It's the latest version, and uh, I, I actually use uh, uh, a lot of uh, Adobe products, but primarily uh, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, uh, Audition, and Photoshop, those four. Uh, pieces of software and and that runs me about uh, 50 bucks a month um, so it, just to know that uh, this is what I do here is not uh, something that um, just appears I have to actually do the work and I, I, I pay for it so if uh, if you all can um, find it uh, uh, you know in your heart to make a donation I can really use it uh, anyway so what we're looking at here is Adobe Photoshop the latest greatest version and um, primarily the two tools I use uh, and I've always used is uh, the either the healing brush or uh, the clone cloning tool and uh, if you look to the left hand side of the of the, the screen there you can see the uh, tool tips and I'll be switching back and forth between them um, if you slow this down I've got it running about 1200 uh, percent faster uh, 1200 times faster than what normal is so uh, we're not here for a month waiting for this video to be done. Uh, so you can slow it down and you can see what's actually being done there. But um, all I'm really doing is, is I'm, I'm robbing color from one place and, and, I'm, and I'm applying it to another place. Uh, uh, there are times when 
you uh, want to uh, take complete elements. Uh, for instance, I had a photograph at one time. It was uh, done uh, about 1880, and uh, somebody had folded it in half. It was one, one on cardboard, and it broke the photograph in half. And so uh, the uh, owners of it wanted it repaired. But unfortunately, that break went right through a horse's leg, up and down uh, through the horse's leg. And uh, so there was no leg left. So you had a three-legged horse. So I had to repair that. And uh, I discovered the way to do it was to actually take the other leg and take it out as an element. Uh, copy it as an element, apply it to where the other rear leg would go, and of course it's not in the right right position or the right shape. And uh, using other tools in Photoshop, I was able to bend that leg in the proper position, shade it properly, and th not even the owner could tell that that wasn't the original leg. So. Uh, Photoshop is an incredible tool. I am by far not an expert. I am an amateur here. Um, uh, you can um, get a lot of information on how to do this if you want through using Google or uh, on YouTube. Uh, and I want to thank those folks out there that put those uh, educational videos out there because I use them constantly. So thank you all for uh, helping me do what I do here. As I said, I'm, I'm no expert by any means. I just love what I do, and so I, um, I've been doing it for 20 years and, um, uh, or more, and uh, um, I just got a passion for it. So I pay for it out of my pocket if I've got to, and I learn what I need to do, but I only learn just enough to get me by. Uh, I'm just one of those guys. Um, so again, all you're doing really here is swapping color for color. Uh, black on that crack, and uh, I'm taking uh, pieces out of other places that that and, and there's there's some intuition there on knowing what's going to work and what's not, but that comes with experience. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for a lot of years, so I do have some experience in that in that respect. Um, I just uh, you know this is one of those things that. Uh, uh, I wanted to exp uh, I wanted to share uh, uh, because there's there's not a lot of panoramic photographs out there, but there's enough of them, and they're rolled up and they're rolled up tight and like a spring. And if you unfold them or unroll them rather, you wind up breaking and cracking them. So that's why I wanted to show you how to steam them and to get them to you know get them straight straightened out. And then here to show you the worst case scenario where you have to repair them. So that amateurs like you and me can to do what we do. Experts won't find this very interesting, but uh, uh, an amateur out there, uh, somebody just getting into this might. So, um, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to encourage other people. Museums can do only what they you know as much as they can do. Uh, the rest of it's out there is out up to uh, folks like us. I don't know that a museum would even be interested in going this far on a photograph like this. So. With that said, um, I want to thank you so very much for watching this video and um, like, subscribe, and uh, so that you don't miss the uh, uh, new stuff. I've kind of changed tactics uh, with some of these videos I'm using. I'm making my own these days rather than using uh, pre-recorded stuff. And um, so uh, I hope you enjoy the new, uh, the new video format. Meanwhile, you have a really nice day. We'll see you next time.